Hi, I'm Caio from Atelier RPG and in this video I'd like to show you how I made this rune terrain for RPGs and war games. I made sure to just use very cheap and accessible materials, like this thin XPS foam that's easier to find in Brazil. I also used sand, vermiculite to be exact, and the material most of you already know and are most familiar, craft paint, Brazilian brand. I also use very basic techniques in the building process, so if you never crafted before, this is a very good point of start. So with that said, <laughs> let's check the video and see. Now, for starters, you can see this is not a very precise process. I use spare XPS foam for the build, so I only cut it square so I could have similar strips. I cut the strips as wide as they are thick. Once you have a good amount of strips, you can cut them with a regular blade. Those are gonna be our bricks, and they will build our ruins. Mine are about half an inch long, because I use the markings on my pad to measure them. I used another piece of XPS foam to make the base for the ruins. The shape can be whatever you want, just try and cut them in an angle so they can blend better with the table. Now starts the process of gluing bricks individually. I used white glue and I glued two rows at a time, allowing it to dry. Remind yourself to offset the bricks, like an actual wall. On the largest ruin, I decided to make a door frame and something that seemed to hold decorations at some point. Nothing complicated, the door frame are just upright bricks, and the side structure is done like everything else. In case of gaps in the build, feel free to cut up some of the bricks and make them fit. It's a ruin, it doesn't need to be perfect. By the way, the tool you're seeing me use to apply glue is just a spare piece of XPS foam, it's not some specialized tool.
I keep building until I think I got enough height to obstruct vision for the figures. And you can test this by placing one next to it and checking for line of sight. When you're finished, it should all be very solid, but also lightweight. Applying sand to the soil part is very simple. You just cover the whole ground with white glue and apply sand on top. That's all. Just remember to shake off the excess sand. I cover my workspace with scrap plastic, because spray bottles are not exactly precision tools. In a 1 to 1 ratio, I apply white glue mixed with water on all of the sand. Also, wash your nozzle immediately after using glue. With everything now dry and glued, I apply the first layer of paint, matte black acrylic. I diluted it with water until the consistency of milk and apply over everything. The reason why I cover my workspace is that we're dealing with a lot of pain and spills are bound to happen. With the dark brown, I cover all of the ground, just like I did with the black. With natural sienna paint, I apply it on my palette without dilution. And with very little paint on my brush, I brush the texture of the ground with the sides of the brush. This is called an overbrush, and it should leave us with some nice shadows. Now, I'll mix matte black and matte white acrylics, without dilution, and apply it on the bricks, the same way I did with the natural sienna. With a light cream and cadmium yellow mixed up once more without dilution, I used even less paint on my brush and very lightly brushed the sides of it against the highest parts of the ground texture. In the end, I didn't like how it looked. So I lightly brushed natural sienna over almost all the yellow parts, 
bringing it back to a more red tone. To finish the bricks, I mixed a lighter gray, just like the first one, and dry brushed it over the highest parts of the walls. Dry brushing is when you wet your brush in paint and wipe most of it off in a paper towel, and then you gently brush it over the piece. It leads to very easy tone transitions. An optional step that I believe elevates this kind of build is grass flocking. Just spread glue where you want the grass to go with a popsicle stick or an old brush and apply the grass over it. Simple. The grass flocking I use is Knock and it's the easiest one to find in Brazil due to model train stores. After applying, tap the excess off and save it, it's still usable. And after drying, it's done. Ruin terrain for RPG scenarios or war game tables. A great addition for the immersion of any game really. And also, these can be used strategically in games to block larger minis. Well, I hope you liked the video. And I also hope that it has inspired you to build your own terrain for your RPG sessions or your war game matches. That would be very cool. There's still a lot more to come on the channel, so subscribe to be informed, leave a like if you liked, and friends, Good games.